Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to The Discriminating Gamer. You know, I'm reading a book in Braille, and I'm really enjoying it, but something bad is going to happen. I can feel it. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at my top 30 games of 2022. This time we're going to take a look at numbers 20 through 11. We'll get back to the review in just a moment. I want to take a minute to ask you to check out my other channel, that is Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about history, books on history, military history. I even post some of my uh, lectures for my classes on there. Please check that out. Please subscribe to that channel. And now, back to the review. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so we're going to go ahead now and take a look at my uh, top uh, 30 games of 2022, 20 through 11. Now, once again, uh, I apologize. This is so late getting these out, but um, there are so many great games this year, and I wanted to play a lot of them. And, man, what a great game year. So we're going to go ahead and start with my 20. My number 20 is a game that is based on an older game that is one of the all-time greats, one of the all-time classics. And this new one's kind of the same game, but in a much shorter time frame. This is Twilight Struggle Red Sea from GMT Games. Now, in this game... Uh, essentially, it's Conflict in the Horn of Africa. You are essentially um, playing two rounds of Twilight Struggle, but just in Africa and the Middle East. You're just scoring these regions. And so it's a very quick game, about 30, 45 minutes or so, um, but it's still got that same kind of contest of you know, back and forth with the scoring and, and the way you play the cards and those same tough decisions. I've said this a hundred times, Twilight Struggle, the real genius of Twilight Struggle is you will never play a game that will make you, force you to make the best of bad decisions the way Twilight Struggle does. It's so good. And this here, this Twilight Struggle Red Sea, it's a great way to play this game in an abbreviated way because the, the, the regular game is about a three-hour game. Like I said, this is about a half hour, maybe a little bit more than that. But it's a fantastic game, really a lot of great back and forth there, tense moments, tough choices. Twilight Struggle from GMT, that is my number 20. My number 19 is a... Um, solitaire game. I actually did a preview for the um, Kickstarter, and then they sent me um, uh, the, after the Kickstarter, they sent me a copy of the game, and it's just great. And this is Resist. <clears throat> Resist is about the resistance movement to Franco in Spain after World War II. Franco, of course, is the fascist dictator of Spain. In this game, you're attempting to essentially topple him, but you go on these missions. You get these cards that have these various missions, and as you're going on these missions, um, you have a chance to play cards. And you can play cards where they're more effective, but they will be found out, and they'll probably be lost to you in the game. Or you can play cards that are more covert, and their, their abilities aren't as good but you'll be able to hang on to them and use them later and maybe really pull them out. But the problem is as you're going after these missions, other cards are like coming out to defend those missions. And you got to deal with those cards too. Very fun game. Very, very good, engaging, uh, solitaire game here that I really enjoyed. So that is Resist. That is from Salt and Pepper Games. And that is my number 19. My number 18 is another solitaire game, and this is Gettysburg Solitaire. Uh, this is a book war game, and this is a game, of course, that you know you need a pen and or pencil and dice, and you're 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 going through these uh, two different scenarios where you're attacking the enemy, you're the Confederates trying to beat the Union lines, and as you're going through, you're making these decisions. You know, you're 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 who who do you want to attack? You figure out what your attack is, and then you roll for the enemy. You see what the Union player does to you. It may it may spoil your attack. It may mitigate things on your side. It may do nothing, in which case you can go. But you, you play out your side, and it's it's tremendous fun. And it amazes me in these kind of storybook, in these, in these solitaire book games, war games, uh, just how much of a story plays out and just how thematic it is and how much it sucks you in. A lot of chance. There's a ton of chance because it's all about dice rolls. But it's almost like a choose-your-own-adventure book with with dice and it's great and i love it so that is uh, gettysburg solitaire and that is from worthington my number 17 is a game based on an ip and it's one of those games you know i, I kind of wish this got a little more buzz because i really think it's quite good and this is firefly misbehaven and firefly misbehaven is a game that 
It's a deck building game. Essentially, it's a Firefly deck building game. Now, if you like Firefly, which I do, I thought Firefly was a great TV show. Um, it, it's a deck builder, but you're also, as you're building, as you're fighting with the decks, you're also building a tableau. And as you build that tableau, you are scoring points. So the more cards you're getting out, you're scoring points. So you're actually got to watch your enemy. How far are they getting? And then you can attack cards on their tableau. And you can attack cards to take them, or you can attack cards just to force them to go back into their discard pile. And so there's there's a lot of uh, a lot of interaction, right? It's a deck builder that you know if you're just concentrating on what you're doing, you're going to lose and you're going to lose fast. But if you're constantly paying attention to what your enemies are doing, you you can do it. Now I played a two player and a three player game of this, and I really want to try it with four because I really think it would shine with four players because then everybody's looking at everybody else and you, you're going to gang up on the leader there. Really liked it. Really liked Firefly Misbehaving. Great theme and, and just a, a kind of a fun and, and innovative way to play this game. So this is my number 17. That's Firefly Misbehaving from Gale Force 9. Another game from GMT that's also area control. And I don't know what it was about this one. It just it it just kind of... It's it's light and it's quick and it's fun. I played it solitaire. I thought the solitaire was okay. But I really like the, the two-player version of this. And this is Flashpoint South China Sea. And the idea here is one of you are the Americans, one of you are the Chinese, and you're essentially kind of vying for influence and kind of diplomatic um, uh, pressure uh, in the Middle East on kind of different regions like Indonesia and Vietnam and, and et cetera, et cetera. And it's, it's very well done. The, the, the Americans have certain advantages and the Chinese have certain advantages. And so it's interesting kind of how the ebb and flow of the game works out there. But it's got a great... It's not a historical theme, it's like a current events theme, and it's done very, very well. Really, really good, and again, I like this one too because it's a quick game, but you still it still packs a pretty big punch here. So that is Flashpoint South China Sea, that is from GMT, and that is my number 16. My number 15 is an IP game, and this is Star Wars Villainous from Ravensburger. Now, Star Wars Villainous, um, of course, I played a lot of the Disney Villainous, and it's a great game, and this brings brings the, the, the game to Star Wars IP. I played the Marvel one, which I thought was so-so. I liked the Disney one. I thought the Marvel one was so-so. But the Star Wars one, hands down, is the best of the villainous lines. I really, really like villainous here. Star Wars villainous. Because you've got uh, two different kinds of currency you're dealing with here. I really like how some of the cards can become vehicles that you can add to your locations that you can go to. Um, and I really like the different, the variety of... Um, mini games that each of the each of the villains has there things that you know Darth Vader has to turn Luke to the Darth side General Grievous is collecting lightsabers you know so there's there's a lot of different um different things you can do here I, I it's got Kylo Ren in it which I'm not a big fan of the prequels but his stuff's pretty cool too how you gotta kind of move you're trying to get to the dark side all your stuff to the dark side it's it's really a lot of fun uh so I really enjoyed Star Wars Villainous this is from Ravensburger and this is my number 15. My number 14 is a game that is pretty close to my heart because um, I love the IP and I love the IP as a child and I, I still kind of have a, like I say, a soft spot, soft spot in my heart for it. But this is G.I. Joe Mission Critical. G.I. Joe Mission Critical is a game, it's based on a Power Rangers game. I was never, you know, I was too old for Power Rangers. But G.I. Joe... Um, Essentially, Cobra's trying to take over the world, and there are these four locations, and it's kind of almost a pandemic thing. You're going to send Joes to do battle, but you got this card system where your cards are not only what you use in order to do battle, but they're also kind of your health system as well. So it's a real fun and challenging game in which you're trying to uh, beat Cobra in, in these locations and uh, play through, you know, you've got these battles that, 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 that come out. And you draw, depending on the, the, the Cobra Troopers there, you draw battle cards. And then you kind of take turns battling. You know, it's a cooperative game, so you're all taking turns battling the 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 cards that come up. And then you also have commanders like Destro and Cobra Commander. They're like the big baddies. But you also have, you know, Lieutenant Scrap Iron and, you know, Baroness and Major Blood. And you're fighting them, and they've got special cards that come out that you've got to battle that are even more powerful. And they do, the cards do different things. So it's, it's just tremendous fun. Um, and it's a great... It's a great way in your 40s to relive your childhood because you're still playing with little G.I. Joe minis, right? So that is number 14. That is a G.I. Joe mission-critical game. That is from Renegade. 
I, I'd always maintained that my, of all the Saltair War games, kind of Gettysburg and, and Waterloo were probably my favorites, but I played one that I think bests them. And this is Coral Sea Solitaire. And uh, Coral Sea Solitaire is really fun because you've got the uh, carrier battles. It's the Battle of the Coral Sea, you know, May of 42. And you are the USS uh, Lexington in the Yorktown. And you're going up against the three Japanese carriers. And what you're doing is you're assigning, as you're moving, you're assigning kind of location grids, north, south, east, or west. You're searching them, and they're searching for you. And if you spot each other, if one of you spots the other, then you engage in a battle. And it's simultaneous. You do two rounds of combat where you've, you, you know, you've got a combat air patrol assigned. Your enemy comes through. You've got to determine what the casualties are with the, with the combat air patrol. But then they start attacking your ship. And then you send your planes, and you attack their ship. You do two rounds of combat. Uh, and then that that's over, and then you, then you keep going, and you're trying, of course, to stop the the convoy from reaching New Guinea, and it's just it's just like I say, the these solitaire book war games play such great stories. They create such great stories. It's so much fun. It's so engaging, and I don't know what it was. I love. I just love the idea of the carrier battles in the Pacific. Uh, in fact, the Battle of the Coral Sea, just FYI, was the very first battle in the history of the world, naval battle in the history of the world, where the two fleets, the two surface fleets, never even came within sight of each other. This battle was fought entirely by carrier aircraft from opposing carriers. Um, and so it's just a fascinating battle, and it's really fun to play it out with this system. And I almost kind of hope and wonder, will they be able to do something similar with... Um, uh, like Battle of Midway, which I think would be a lot of fun as well. Okay, but this is number uh, 13, that is Coral Sea Solitaire, and that is from Worthington. So my number 12 is another Solitaire game, and this one is from the great David Thompson. This is Lazarus Ridge from DVG. Lazarus Ridge, it, it's a battle that takes place during the Battle of the Bulge, and you are essentially the American lines, and the Germans are trying to, 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 to come across the, 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 the field toward you, and you're, you're shooting them down, you're trying to keep them down, but of course, ammunition's getting limited, you've got, you can try to call in artillery strikes, um, but that's not always gonna, gonna help you uh, the way you think it will. Um, it's just, it's, it's a brilliant game of kind of trying to shore up your defense, and all of these valiant uh, defense games are, um, Pavlov's house and uh, and uh, uh, post soldiers and postmen's uniforms and castle litter. I love these games, and Lazarus Ridge is just a brilliant version of it. It's wonderful. Uh, I really like uh, Lazarus Ridge because, first of all, the story of the battle is just amazing. These guys, you know, managed to hold up a huge Nazi um, force, you know, for like a day, which is a big deal here. And it's just very good, very fun, very, very, very engaging story and very good mechanics that let you relive that, that story as much as you can in cardboard form. But that is Lazarus Ridge, that is from DVG, and that is my number 12. My number 11 is a game that's kind of, it's kind of unusual. I don't know that I've ever played a game quite like it, um, but this came out a few months ago. I played it a few times. And it, it's kind of a game of exploration and resources, and it's fun. It's uh, the Guild of Merchant Explorers from AEG. And in the Guild of Merchant Explorers, essentially everybody has the same kind of map. And you're, you're moving out from your capital, and you are going to, to, to certain places, but you're, playing, you're, you're each playing certain cards that let you do certain things. But then you can also kind of individualize your movements. You can get an individual card to, to, do, to do individual cards to do certain kinds of movements, take certain kinds of actions. But you're exploring the card, you're exploring these maps, you're taking up all of these, these, these resources, you're using them, and you're trying, of course, to gain the most points. It's a brilliant game. I really enjoy it, it because it's, it's, like I say, it's a game of exploration, and they're always a lot of fun. Uh, not quite a 4X but in any event, I really enjoy uh, the Guild of Merchant Explorers. So that is the Guild of Merchant Explorers. That's from AEG, and that is my number 11. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us to this day. Please let me know, what do you think about this list? Do you like these games? Do you not like these games? What do you think is coming up in the top 10? I, I, I'm very interested to know what your thoughts are and what your predictions are. But uh, please go ahead, uh, let me know what you think. And then also please uh, subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, etc., etc. I'd also ask you to please, please check out my other channel, Cody Carlson PhD. We talk about military history, books on history, and posting my lectures for my World War II courses on there. If you have any interest in that, please check it out. And please subscribe, that would mean a lot to me. I'll probably post this video on Board Game Geek, and you can uh, please leave a thumb there. We'd appreciate it. You know, ladies and gentlemen, what do you get when you combine a rhetorical question and a joke?